Hello, my name is Jim Lucan, and today, once again, we're out here at the wonderful Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve, just a few miles from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. If you've never been to Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve, it's someplace you need to put on your definitely must go and visit list. And today what I want to do is talk about one of the really cool features out here at Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve, and that's a Carolina Bay and in particular what I want to show you today is the sand rim of a Carolina Bay and I'm standing on one right now and uh, we'll walk around here and we'll talk a little bit about how these things might have formed we'll talk about how you can locate them and some of the plants that grow there so let's go and explore sand rims of Carolina Bays here at Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve now, if you've spent any time at all studying the origin of Carolina Bays, you know there's all kinds of crazy theories out there about how these oval-shaped depressions were formed. I'm not going to talk too much about that today, but what I want to do is first talk about just exactly what the sand rim is, and it's pretty easy to understand. You go out here to Lewis Ocean Bay and there's these white sand, almost beach-like areas. And those are the sand rims that I'm talking about. Out here at Lewis Ocean Bay, the type of plants you'll see most commonly are these sand live oaks and also predominantly longleaf pines. Now, one of the most credible theories for the origin of Carolina Bays has to do with not extraterrestrial landing objects, not wind and water, but a theory that goes like this. About 13,000 years ago, when the ice sheets covered much of northern parts of North America, there was a meteorite impact, and the meteorite hit and sent giant chunks of ice flying through the air. And many of those giant chunks of ice hit on the coastal plain of the eastern United States, forming these depressions. And eventually what happened is these depressions formed into Carolina Bays. But we still don't know why these white sand rims formed. Well, the idea or the hypothesis is pretty simple. When those big chunks of ice hit and threw dirt up as a berm, through time, rain tended to wash out the, the clay and the silt particles, leaving behind this white sand. And so presumably, that's the idea. Ice chunks hit, formed these depressions, Rain tended to wash out the clay particles from the, uh, from the raised edges, and that's how we ended up with these relatively dry, white, sandy rims. So it's very difficult to get a sense of the shape and the morphology of Carolina Bays from the ground. It's best to do this using aerial photographs, and I'll show you one of these. However, you can sort of get a sense of what's going on here simply by walking around and the best indicator of what's going on is the vegetation. So let's look at this sand rim of this Carolina Bay and like I said most of this vegetation here is uh, sand live oak, uh, some turkey oaks, longleaf pine, it's a very dry arid environment and now what we're going to do is we're going to walk in this direction, which is the depression part of this Carolina Bay. And as you walk along this sand rim, you'll notice a couple of things happening. Out there in the distance, you might be able to pick up the actual depression of the Carolina Bay. And, and I predict very soon here, we're going to get stopped and I'll tell you why we're going to get stopped. So we're still on the sand rim and I can get a sense that the sand rim is sort of sloping down very gently. So we're walking down this slope and then almost instantly 
the vegetation changes to something a little bit different. We have um, dwarf blueberries, we have uh, some ink berries, and then we get to about right here and we come up against a wall of vegetation right here it's mostly inkberry fetter bush some loblolly pines and off way in the distance hopefully you can see them are the pond pines which tend to grow in the middle of these carolina bays these carolina bays are shallow depression wetlands and so what happens as we go from the depression part of the Carolina Bay where it's relatively wet and holds water and again we walk back up the sand rim we're gonna walk from something that's considered a wetland and over a space of just 15 or 20 steps we walk into a community that's considered dry, arid, and almost desert-like. That is the cool thing about these Carolina Bays because that transition from dry to wet has been shown to be a very important place for all kinds of interesting endemic plants to emerge. So let's take a little stroll on this Carolina Bay sand rim and look at some of the more common plants you'll find growing here. Longleaf pines tend to occur here and uh, some of these have been planted some of these are from natural regeneration um, but longleaf pines tend to do pretty well in these dry sandy soils like this in contrast to some of the other pine species that we have here that don't do as well. And right next to it sand live oak these little shrubby sand live oaks uh, tend to be just about everywhere on these Carolina Bay sand rims. Doesn't get very big, um, but it is a common component out here of these sand rims. Wiregrass. Wiregrass doesn't form large communities on these sand rims, but it's found here and there and uh, the, uh, the clumps that it forms are really obvious because there's not a lot of wire grass in contrast to some of the wetter areas away from these sand rims. Some of these sand rim areas are so dry and so nutrient poor, very few plants at all can grow on these. Here's some turkey oaks, sort of mixed in here with the sand live oaks. And because it's winter, we're not really seeing a lot of other plants, but these aren't, at least here at Lewis Ocean Bay, some of the more diverse communities that we have. Um, a good example of just how dry it is on these sand rims is indicated by these beds of lichens that you see often growing underneath the sand live oaks. And once again, off in the distance, you see the depression part of the Carolina Bay. If we could track how we're walking here, what we'd find, of course, is we're walking around the lip or the edge of this oval-shaped Carolina Bay. And uh, you really can't get lost because, as I showed you before, if you go in toward the Carolina Bay you encounter this wall of vegetation and as you go out to the top of the sand ridge it gets drier and drier and drier and more sandy until eventually it stops and you get into some of the more normal typical um, vegetation that you find out here. So you might be wondering why there are so few large trees on this particular sand rim well, about 10 or 15 years ago, there was a large forest fire out here, and a lot of the trees were damaged, and uh, there was a logging operation that occurred to, uh, to remove some of the damaged trees, and then uh, longleaf pines, like that one right there, were planted. Um, it's important to recognize, of course, that longleaf pines tend to be rather slow-growing, 
on these dry nutrient poor sand rims and so there will be a forest again after the logging operation but it's going to take a while before a large forest is ever established here again that's of course one good reason why you might not want to come in and log on these Carolina Bay sand rims because it takes such a long time for trees to grow in these nutrient poor dry soils. And of course that dead wood from those damaged pine trees makes good habitat for woodpeckers and all kinds of other sorts of animals. All right, let's do a little recap and summary. Lewis Ocean Bay Heritage Preserve has 15 or 20 of these Carolina Bays that you can come and see. The most easy aspect of these Carolina Bays for people to observe on the ground are these sand rims that uh, presumably were thrown up as a result of those big chunks of ice coming from up north and then through time the rain washed out the clay particles and the silt particles and left behind this white bleached sand. They're very dry, arid environments, nutrient poor. Only a few plants can grow here like sand live oaks and longleaf pines and wiregrass and a few other things. But the most important aspect of these Carolina Bays is that dramatic transition. A transition that takes us from a dry, almost desert-like environment like the one I'm walking in right now to the wetland that we see down here ahead of us which is the depression of the Carolina Bay and so that transition zone between extremely dry and extremely wet is for some reason or another an, an incredibly important area for the evolution of all kinds of endemic plants here in the southeast. And so you can come out here to Lewis Ocean Bay and you can see Venus flytraps, pitcher plants, all kinds of orchids and other sorts of plants, many of them in this transition zone. It's a very special place. And as I said at the beginning of this video, put it on your list of places to visit and by all means, don't collect any of the plants out here because this is becoming very quickly one of the last remaining refuges of rare plants in South Carolina. This is Jim Lucan and have a good day.